Welcome back and we start off this segment in Kenya. Following a 10-year success of its mobile money innovation called M-Pesa, Kenya has started another world-first financial services by selling a mobile phone-based government bond, looking to draw more investors into the government securities market. Known as M-Akiba, the new bond will be offered on M-Pesa and similar mobile phone financial services by other firms. Kenya began selling its first mobile phone-based government bond as part of an ambitious plan to broaden the pool of investors in government securities. The government is initially making a limited offer of 150 million shillings to test the system before a bigger offer in June. The Akiba is uh, about financial inclusion. We want to get as many Kenyans to be included in the financial sector. So. Uh, using the mobile where about 23 million Kenyans are now having mobiles, they can easily access uh, this uh, product and they will be fully participating in the financial uh, system as opposed to where they are currently um, excluded just because uh, uh, the amounts that are uh, supposed to be invested are much higher. Treasuries in other emerging economies will be watching with interest. Most would like to broaden their sources of borrowing beyond local banks and international financial institutions. The M. Akiba bond will be offered on M. Pesa and similar mobile phone financial services by other firms. Investors will be able to buy the bond through their phones where a record of their holdings will be stored. Coupon payments will also be made through the phone. The first time where we, we will provide securities, government securities, um, to the entire population, a point where you can buy your securities for uh, as little as $3,000, uh, 3,000 shillings. It is remarkable. I don't think this, has, this is something that we can take lightly. Kenya pioneered the use of mobile money in 2007 with M-Pesa, a money transfer service by telecoms operator Safaricom. M-Pesa allows users to transfer cash and make payments on even the most basic mobile phone. In partnership with local banks, Safaricom has since expanded the service to offer savings, lending and insurance products. And the top Africa's 500 companies have faced lower overall turnover with profits crashing down hard between 2014 and 2015 and how now searching for a rebound on a new global economy and markets. This was how the managing editor of the African Report magazine, Nicholas Nobrosko, puts it in a short interview with Channel's business editor, Bolson Omofaye, at, at this week's gathering of Africa CEOs, policymakers and investors in Geneva, Switzerland. You just published this latest edition of the magazine and you're talking about the challenges top 500 African businesses face. What are the results of what you're saying? That's right. It's been a very difficult uh, 18 months, I think. Everyone has felt the pinch across the board, uh, but especially, of course, the oil companies, anything to do with natural resources. We've been doing this ranking of Africa's top 500 companies by turnover now for the last 10 years. And in the last two years, the, the uh, sort of the total of the top 500 altogether, their, their aggregate turnover has actually gone down in the last two years. So. You know, things are at a, a difficult turn. But I think it's perhaps the crisis that uh, African countries need to really focus on diversifying their economy. If you look at your survey, what does it talk to about the challenges and the opportunities that exist on the African continent for the big companies going through commodity cycle at the moment? Well, I mean, one way is to, to get as fit as possible. Uh, in these difficult times, uh, you might be looking at uh, your supply contracts, uh, all, all your logistics and your partners. Do you really need them? Are the contracts gold-plated? Is this the time to renegotiate them? So I think there's a, a lot of uh, tinkering to be done there. Um, but then perhaps more broadly, you know, uh, if you are purely in the uh, oil business, maybe it's time to start looking at other, you know, other side ventures you can you can maybe push the company into. What are Africa's CEOs telling you about 
the various challenges they face running their business within various jurisdictions across the continent? Well, um, getting hold of foreign exchange, uh, I imagine something which will your, your uh, uh, viewers in Nigeria will sympathize with. That's the same across the continent. We were talking to some Ethiopian CEOs this morning. Uh, Ethiopia considers foreign exchange one of the most valuable resources they have, and so they, they ration it. You know, they don't have as much as Nigeria, and they're nowhere close. So they ration it, and if you're in a priority sector, if you're a manufacturer, if you're an exporter, you can get access to, uh, to hard currency quite easily. In the meantime, entrepreneurs, key opinion leaders and social influencers, CEOs and select politicians and non-governmental organizations were in Berlin, Germany on Thursday, March 23 for the Germany Africa Business Forum. This forum is a one-day event which enables exchange between German and African business communities. Berlin's weather generally isn't at its best in March, but that hasn't spoiled the mood at the Germany Africa Business Forum. For the first time, Pan-African business representatives and politicians have come to Germany to talk about investment. The continent is spreading its economic wings. Onyeche Tifase is Siemens Nigeria's chief executive, the first woman to hold the position. She says Africa is not just a continent full of problems. It also offers an array of opportunities, and it's changing. Most countries were traditionally oil and gas driven, um, and this is really changing. We see a bigger requirement for um, consumer goods. We see a, a, a bigger requirement also for utilities. Um, even digitalization is a topic we're trying to drive as Siemens across Africa now. So um, in Nigeria, we've, uh, we've seen where innovation hubs and startups are trying to um, emerge, and we're trying to support this as well, where they're trying to emerge and, and be active in the IT industry. German businesses have invested a total of 9 billion euros in African countries so far. That's much less than in other global regions. But the money has mainly gone to three countries, Algeria, Nigeria and South Africa. Hardly anything goes to the rest of the continent. Some 800 German companies have operations in Africa. The foreign delegates want German companies to vary their investments more and spread them more widely rather than follow the standard model of large companies working in large countries. They say Africa offers a multitude of burgeoning markets with an expanding middle class. While the Germans are bringing the capital, they're bringing the technology, but you need to create that environment, make it easier for, 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 for businesses to set up, make it easier to have a clear, fair tax and rules and regulations. And also, we should no longer step away from, from target, target, targeting and continue to fight on issues like corruption. It's often said that Germans are too cautious and tend to avoid risk. That's why trust building is a major element of the Germany Africa Business Forum. And that's it on the program for today and of course for the week. Thank you very much for watching. Do have a beautiful weekend.